Scene, RM1A, take one. Music. It is, uh, the shorthand is, it's based on a Mark Twain short story by the same title. Uh, the action of the story takes place at the turn of the last century, sometime between 1900 and 1910. There is an unusual quality to what we're doing, and I don't know, and I suspect it's a mark of ignorance rather than actual originality, uh, but we have kept every word of the short story in the, in the movie, every bit of narrative text sentences such as, and then she said, he thought and remarked, every one of these lines is kept. And every one of them is spoken on camera by an actor. Now then, drop that notion out of your mind and don't ever meddle with it again. Tilbury said that. Ultimately, one of the primary goals is to let Mark Twain's voice sing. Uh, it's an extraordinary voice. It is, it is uniquely American voice. Um, and it's a truly unique artistic vision of the world. Cut. That was good. You know, we like to think, I think, certainly when we do theater and when we do great classical plays, that the reason we do them is not because of how old they are, but in spite of how old they are. It's remarkable how timely Shakespeare is, and Mark Twain is no exception. The story, if, if, you, if you've been married, if you intend to get married, or if you, or if you know anybody who's been married, mm -hmm. The story will say something to you. <laughs> what a beautiful thing.